Hello everyone, welcome to the second chapter of the book, namely a tour of the book. I separate this chapter into the two video series. In this video, the first one will be consisted of the aggregate output and the unemployment rate. In the second one, following one, we will discuss the in the inflation rate, Ockham's law, Phillips curve, and the short run, medium run, and long run. These are the remaining part of the, this chapter, right? Okay, the words output, unemployment, inflation, appears daily in newspaper and on the evening news, right? In, the, in this chapter, we try to understand, we try to explain what these words mean. We try to define these words more exactly, more precisely, okay? This chapter also introduced a concept around which the, this book is organized, the short run, medium run, and the long run. Okay, let's start with the aggregate output. National income and product accounts were developed at the end of World War II as a major of aggregate output. The major of aggregate output is called gross domestic product, GDP, okay? The how would you define aggregate output in the economy? This is an important question. Okay, look at this example. This example consists of the two firms, right? Consider and imagine an economy which consists of these two firms, okay? The first one produces steel, the second one produces car. Question is this, is aggregate output the sum of the values of all goods produced in this example, which is equal to 300, right? 200 plus 100 is equal to 300 or just the value of the cars which is equal to 200 this is an important question we know that the steel is an intermediate good which is commodity used in the car industry right used in the another sector so gdp is calculated into the three ways we have three ways three different definition to calculate the GDP, okay? The first one is the GDP is the value of final goods and services produced in the economy during a given period. We want to count only final goods, not in the intermediate goods, because these are used already in the final goods, right? If we, if we merge the two firms, as are in the example, the revenues of the new firms equal to $200, right? Second one is that the GDP is the sum of value added in the economy during a given period. So the value added by a firm is the value of its production minus the value of the intermediate goods used in production. In the two firm example, the value added equals to 100 plus 100, which is equal to 200, right? So far, we have looked at the GDP from the production side in this calculation methods. Third one is that the GDP is the sum of incomes in the economy during a given period. This is an income method, which is commonly used. So aggregate production and aggregate outputs are always equal, right? The from the income side, the value added in the two firms example is equal to sum of labor income, which is 150, and capital or profit, right? Which is equal to 50, right? The total of these two is equal to $200, right? There, there are two types of the GDP. There, was a, there is a distinction of the GDP, which is nominal GDP and the real GDP. So we have two more definitions. The first one, the nominal GDP, is the sum of the quantities of final goods produced times their current prices, okay? So nominal GDP increases for two reasons. The first one, the production of most goods increases, Second one, the price of most goods increases. These are the two reasons 
to cost to increase the GDP. So our goal is to measure uh, production and its change uh, over the time. This is the goals, right? We are the economists. So real GDP is another important important definition. Another important uh, important uh, term is the sum of quantities of final goods times constant rather than current constant prices. Look at this example, right? We have three years, which is beginning of the 2008, 2000 and 2009 and 2010. Uh, there are the columns. These are the columns, right? Quantities of cars, price of cars, no nominal GDP, real GDP in 2009 dollars. Look at this table. So real GDP in 2008 is equal to 10 times, 10 cars times $24,000, right? Which is equal to $240,000, right? Just times the price of cars and quantities of cars. So this is, uh, this is the uh, sum of the GDP. This is the how we calculate the aggregate output, right? How we calculate the real GDP, right? So, the for more than one goods, the relative, relative prices of the goods are natural weights for constructed the weighted average of the output of all final goods. So, real GDP in change, two thousand nine dollars, reflect reflects the relative prices that change over time, right? This is important. The years used to construct prices, which is the constant year, is called the, the uh, called the base year, right? Base year. Look at this graph. This graph uh, the shows the nominal and real GDP of the United States between the period between the 1960 and 2014, right? The blue line represents the nominal GDP. The purple line indicates the real GDP billions of the $2,009, right? The constant year, base year is the 2009, right? Nominal GDP is also called dollar GDP or GDP in current dollars. Real GDP is also called the GDP in terms of goods, terms of commodities, GDP in constant dollar, base dollar, GDP adjusted for inflation, or GDP in chained dollars, chained $2,009 dollars, for example, or the GDP in $2,009, right? So GDP will refer to real GDP. YT, in this chapter, we use the YT, we denote the YT, it, it is a uh, real GDP, okay, in, in year T. So if, if you see, uh, term which is which represent the yt uh, if you see any term as the yt in this book it is the real gdp okay real gdp in year t so nominal gdp and variables in current dollars will be denoted by the dollar signs okay dollar signs in front of the them right dollar yt this means the uh, we talk about the current GDP, okay? Look at the growth rate of United States between period between 2000 and 2020, the last decade of the uh, United States. So GDP growth in year T, for example, this year, is calculated this formula, right? YT minus YT minus 1, T minus 1, means the previous years, right? Divided by yt minus y, yt minus one. That is, so this year minus previous year divided by previous year, okay? This is the uh, calculation methods of the GDP growth. Okay, the Department of Commerce deals with change changes in the quality of existing goods, existing uh, commodities, like computers, for example, right, with an approach called 
hedonic pricing, which threats goods as providing a collections of characteristics, collections of their features. So the quality of new laptops, competing services or competing, competing services has increased on average by 18% a year since 1995. So the dollar price of typical laptop has also declined by, by about $7 a year since 1995, right? These are important difference. This applies that the laptops qualities adjusted prices have fallen at an average rate of uh, 18 minus 18 plus uh, 7 which is equal to 25 percent per year right okay let's continue with the unemployment rate employment rate it is the first term which is the number of people who have a job in an economy Unemployment is the number of people who do not have a job but are looking for one, right? The labor force is another term, is the sum of employment and unemployment. As you see, right? Labor force is equal to employment plus unemployment. The unemployment rate is the ratio of the number of people who are unemployed to the number of people in the labor force okay u is equal to u divided by l most rich countries relies on large surveys of households to compute the unemployment rate the united states current population survey relies on interviews of 60,000 households every month a people is unemployed if he or she does not have a job and has been looking for a job in the last four weeks but this part is important be careful those who do not have a job and are not looking for a one are counted as not in labor force okay these these people are not counted in the labor force because these people are unemployed but they do not seek a job okay this is an important distinction. We have two more uh, terms. The first one, discouraged workers. These are the people who are the those who give up looking for a job and so no longer counted as unemployment. These are discouraged workers. Second one, the part participation rate is the ratio of the labor force to the total population of working age. Because of discouraged workers, a higher unemployment rate is typically associated with a lower participation rate, okay? So, question is this, why do economists care about the unemployment? The first answer of this question, direct effect of the welfare of the unemployed, especially those remaining unemployed for long periods of the time. The second answer, a signal, this is the signal that the economy is not using its human resources efficiently. Okay guys, this is the end of this video. We will meet again in the following one, second video of the second chapter. Take care yourself, have a nice day.